In this video, I'm going to talk about submitting forms and processing them with PHP. That means form validation and um, typically rendering a page showing the results of the submission. Uh, we could do this is just sort of an intro to it. Um, <clears throat> depending on the application, we could be uh, taking data that ultimately store in a database or something like that. But for this, I'm, we're just going to be um, I'm going to run through an example, taking a couple pieces of information, validate it, and make a, a page. So let me draw a nice little picture for you. Not that any of my pictures are actually that great. Um, oh, let's check this out. This is going to be my web browser with the URL. We have some form in here, a couple fields. Yeah, nice submit button. <clears throat> now that's going to fire off an HTTP request. I'm going to use POST. It's typically how you submit form data. It's going to um, run on my server, which is local. It's running PHP. So this is going to do a couple checks. We're going to first um, make sure all all the parameters or fields or variables or whatever you want to call them are given. All. And then we want to validate um, the information. So in this case, I'm going to <clears throat> simply take in um, a couple of pieces of information related to a car and make sure all the fields are given, make sure that you know data types match, all of that. Then we're going to just send back a page. Um, uh, let's say this. This is. An HTTP response, so that's just going to be HTML. So I'm going to, if everything's good, basically show the information that was sent in. If it was invalid, then I'll, I'll show some errors. So let's jump over to our text editor now. All right. Now I have on the left hand side. So I tab to the correct windows. Um, an HTML page it has an HTML form in it. I've sort of prettied it up with Bootstrap. Bootstrap is you can think I, it's it's a framework. It's a series of style sheets. It's basically a library you can use to um, at, at the least make your pages look nice, sort of by default so it's it's kind of aims at being sort of better defaults for the web so i'm gonna i have this um form where it takes two pieces of information like a car make model and then the year and when i submit the form i want to make sure that you know the model given is not like is, is actually given not an empty string and that the year is um greater than 1900 because that's a reasonable first year for cars. <clears throat> so let's um, let's take a look. So I've made um, a PHP file. Oh, so if, if you look at the, the action of my HTML form, let's jump, let me jump back there for a second. Um, Oops, that was the wrong key press. That's why Vim is dangerous. Um, the action is car.php, so that's going to be looking at my um, on my own server for so local host colon eight thousand because I'm running a local development server for a file called car.php. It will just do some simple validation, or that's what I'm going to add to it, and then it will um, create a page. So let me go check, take a look at that. So that's what's going to be receiving our form data, so car.php. So, so far, I have the makings of a response. 
So if you remember, PHP can use, be used in this style where I have a bunch of HTML here, some really plain HTML, and I'm going to generate the content that goes in the middle of the page effectively before um, returning it to the user with the HTTP response. So what are we going to do? So to receive um, form data, I'm going to say get uh, form data, validate data, and create page. So that's what I'm going to start with. Um, so there's again the receive post data, just like my previous video on getting get data. If I send something via post, it's going to show up in PHP in this magical associative array um, called post. Now, uh, I mentioned previously that arrays, well, they're just, they're like arrays in other languages, but they have, sort of, but they have all this extra functionality. So they're actually associative arrays, meaning there's a key value association. So in my form, I have a car make and I have a year so you can think of those are two um, variables coming from the the form but they also have two values associated with them so that's what I mean by key value um, so the, the the make will have a particular thing like Jeep and the year will have a particular value like 2005 or something like that so arrays in PHP are kind of, it's a really annoying choice they made, um, or rather one guy made a while back that arrays act, it can kind of pretend to be like array like in Java, where they're indexed by number, so you have just a sequence of values, or they can pretend to be like a dictionary or map type. So there's a key that can be kind of anything and a value that can be anything. So <clears throat> one nice thing to do for debugging with this is use this function, this built-in function called var dump. <clears throat> so if I add this, now if I submit my form, I'll get back HTML, so if I can see it, HTML plus this sort of blob of data. This is um, PHP sort of debug representation of an array. So it says, okay, I've got one key model. Let's map the Jeep. One um, key year, and that's mapped to 2001. Not, I also don't find this um, representation to be easy to read, but you can at least sort of pick in or pick out what's exactly is in there. Um, so, so, and if you you think, well, why don't you just echo it? We can try that. It'll just say array. It's really annoying. So you have to use var dump if you actually want to see inside. Um, so that's really important because if I made some mistake, if some field was left out, it wouldn't show up there. Um, so let, let's let's proceed here. So, so I think it's it's usually good practice to start defining functions to validate your data. So I'm gonna. So I want to make sure that, because there's no guarantee, um, there's no guarantee that the client's going to behave how we want it to behave. There's no guarantee that it's going to send in, make a model. It could just send in nothing. It could send in um, something other random. It could be foo and bar. It could be anything else. So we have to make sure that those variables are sent. So let me... Let me actually add this back. So if I do var dump. Now, um, let me switch to a 
terminal here. So if I do curl, this is a, a way of, I can test my, um, also test my uh, PHP script. So this is a way of sending in zero data. So if, now if I do that, I can see here's the outline of my page, but the output of var dump, well, there's nothing being sent in. So that's what I mean. There, I can't even guarantee I'm getting the right sort of parameters in uh, post. So that's something I have to uh, check. So again, I'll go back over here. So one thing we need to do is, um, I'm gonna make a variable, I'm gonna call expected. So I want, um, I'm confusing myself if it's make or model. I'm sending in model. What am I sending in? It's, yeah, def okay, it's definitely model. That was gonna be a bug. Um, and a year. So there's a number of convenient variables, or not variables, functions built in the PHP that can help us. One is called array key exists. Um, yeah. So what I can do is um, one strategy would would be, well, out of this, I'm gonna to wanna to return, say, an array with um, with errors. So I can use a for each loop, so I can, um, oops. So what this is saying is, I'm gonna go through each thing expected. I'm expecting a model and a year and also a value. I'm just gonna make sure model and year are at least, you know, something is at least given to me. Um, that is, those those um, parameters are defined. So that's what array key exists is gonna do. It's gonna check if whatever field name, so it's gonna go through first model, then year, is it in this array I'm calling the car? And then I have the not up here. If it's not the case, I'm going to add an error message. So I'll do uh, array push. And I'm gonna say does not exist. So now I can, let me return this. So if I, uh, um, let's go back to the terminal. So now if I send in the same request with no data, oh, I forgot to call my function, that, that'd be helpful. Um, I can do this. Now, if I go back and run it, um, well, there's a bug in my. Oh, so I said errors instead of error. Um, errors, error. Oh, I was putting it to car, not error. <laughs> there we go. It's late. <laughs> um, so now I can... Ugh. Now I can finally get a message that says, by the way, model wasn't given and year wasn't given.
All right. Um, so one thing I might choose to do is, uh, let's, I'll see, let's say, um, No errors. <clears throat> so I can count the number of errors I sent in here. If it's zero, then that means there is no problem, so I'll just generate some HTML of what was sent in. So great, I can use a, a for loop for that. So if I'm gonna loop over key value pairs, I can do something like this where um, I'll do var arrow uh, value. What I'm going to do here is Echo, let's see, I want an unordered list. And my unordered list. So I'm just gonna create a list item for each uh, value, uh, key value pair sent in. So this is string inter interpolation which is it's kind of a nice feature of PHP uh, let me end the list item put a new line in there for kicks now I'll start to have a somewhat better looking page of well maybe I'll do just about the same thing so again because car has this should be you know make and model with value being bound to the respective values. So make will be Jeep and then value in my example is like 2001 for, uh, for the year. Now, I just need to change this to um, errors as, let's do error. Yeah, so I can, I can add this in. Fantastic. Now, let's let's see how this works. So I hit submit. Hey, so everything's good. Because I'm using this HTML form, it's gonna send it something. So even if I put nothing in this field and send it in, it'll still say, oh, there's a model and send an empty string in, right? So that's what I'm seeing up here. So to get the, the real error case, um, at this moment, I would need to um, switch to something like curl. If I send in something, now you can see, oh, it actually printed out. I'm, I'm still doing that var dump, which is kind of making all this ugly, but you can see, oh, model doesn't exist, year does not exist. So it's, my validation function is actually working. It's saying those are not specified, so we get something prettier there. Um, but let's go back and add some more real validation. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of the var dumps. Now, the next thing I'll do is, so if in my validation function, so if I've defined each variable, um, now I wanna go in and check, does it each one match more stringent criteria? Like, um, the model should be not an empty string. The year in this case should be greater than 1900. If it was like an, if there was like an email address sent in, I should be checking is it in the right format. Um, you know, if it, et cetera, if, if this was, you know, me accepting a username and password to log in, I'd want to, you know, check in the database and make sure the password is there. If I'm signing up a new user for a site, I would want to make sure the password field, you know, has is long enough, has a combination of upper and lower case, numbers, special characters, etc. So you just basically have to write, when you're doing applications like this, you should never trust the inputs. So you need to write really exhaustively um, code to check each thing to make sure, and by each thing, each, each parameter coming in to make sure that it is 
well, one there and defined to be an acceptable value. So just, so I'm going to go through and um, I'm going to validate, uh, validate. So how I'm going to do that here is, well, if the, um, again, I'm just going to do count of error. If this is zero, so that means, okay, I've at least have all the fields. So um, model and year are defined. Now I just need to make sure that the model itself is um, not an empty string. So I'll do that first. So maybe if this is a more, you know, sophisticated application if it's connected to something real. Maybe I'd be making a database query at this point to make sure this model falls within a, a collection of known models or something like that. But I just want to make sure it's not an empty string. So I'll do, um, so now to get the actual model out, I can do car, uh, and then I just ask for this, model by by this key or yeah so I have the car which is an array model which is that key I'm looking up whatever it should be so in this case it should be Jeep and then I'm measuring the length of it with Sterling so if this is um, equal to zero we have a problem so now I'm going to register an error message here so I'm going to add to um, the error array uh, I'll just say should not be empty. <clears throat> so now let, let me just go verify this works. So if I type in, okay, that's the, the successful case. So it came down here, it printed out the information given. I go back. If I just empty out this field, I run it, mm, model should not be empty. Hey, it works. Let's go back. All right, so now I want to validate the um, the year. So now I'll, I'll add another if for this. So the is uh, 1900, let's say. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing that check is I want to make sure whatever is in that year field is actually a number. So there is a, um, a pretty nifty function called uh, filter var. And what I can do is I can give it the car. I can. So this is, uh, since there's so many, um, common um, things to filter, <clears throat> or not filter, excuse me, validate. Like, there's so many, every application is gonna take in a string and wanna make sure it's an integer, for example. Like that's super, super common, taking in a string, making sure it's in the format of an email address, um, taking a string and make sure it's in a valid date format. You can go on and on and on. Like, there's a lot of different things. Filter var, it's got a kind of a strange name, um, but what it does is you can you can give it a variable on the left hand side, some value. On the right hand side, there's all these predefined constants. Because PHP made some bad life decisions, everything's in this sort of global namespace. So, including filter vars is in the default thing. So you can just call it as a built-in PHP function. Also, this this constant, which is in all cases, filter validate int, saying year better be in the format of an int or else, or else it'll return false. So if it's, now I'm gonna use the triple equals too, which is kind of weird because the way the filter var function works, if it's successful, it will just return that value so 
this is really this is some really confusing <laughs> stupid things so I should be able to um, let's do this let me move it up here and call it here so if it's false um, I'm going to add a, a message if it so I didn't really explain finishing that the filter var if it succeeds so if the if the, say year is an integer it'll just return that number it should return that number if it fails it'll return the boolean false this is sort of a php idiom where you have these mixed return types or it could be one type or another that's just a choice they made that's sort of the, the sad world of php um, so that's what triple equals is for it's saying well zero counts as false false counts as false empty strings empty arrays these are all sort of false ish things but I want to make sure it's actually boolean false so triple equals does a type check as well as sort of an equivalency so it's saying I want something that is literally the value false so I'm going to now add to the error message if this is the case uh, I call it error um, yeah integer um, now if it's if it is an integer I want to check um, if if the uh, year is less than 1900 push it onto array uh, the error array um, here should be greater than 1900. Okay, now let's go give it a whirl, cross our fingers. So, okay, not should not be empty. Test this. Okay, that works. If I take this out, here should be an integer. So it's not an integer because it's an empty string. Um, that's good. If I say 1800, so if I have some non-existent car, hey, that doesn't work either. So <clears throat> that's form validation and getting form values, iterating through them. Uh, just a recap, a few key concepts here. The data is going to come in this magic associative array called post. Associative arrays have key value pairs. You can iterate over them with this special for each loop where you have the val uh, like the variable name and then its value. So like make or model and a string, year and hopefully some kind of int. To validate means we need to make sure one, all the pieces of information we're expecting are given. They are all uh, and they're all of the right sort of type or specification. So like the, for in, the in this case, the model needs to be non-empty and the year needs to be greater than 1900 and an integer. And then finally, I'm just, typically the results are gonna be some sort of, you know, success page or something like that of, oh, congratulations, you know, form submitted, order placed, whatever it is. You've, you've seen those pages, right? You click you click the button on Amazon yes I confirm my purchase and says ah you know submitted great <laughs> order submitted that's a form submission um, and then also typically a lot of the user-friendly validations can be done in JavaScript in HTML on the client side um, so you get that immediate feedback without having to submit the form, which creates network traffic. You do need to check again on the server side because you can't trust anything from the client ever, ever, ever. Um, though you can usually, or at least sometimes sort of skimp on being friendly about the response you give <laughs> because um, the, the user-friendly thing should be done in JavaScript typically. So if you're, if you're seeing the error messages come back from the server, you're probably doing something naughty anyway so you shouldn't get a nice message um, but I, I just chose to show it here um, as a list 
but yeah, that's form submission and validation um, in PHP.